Starting off this countdown, we have Jean-Marie Duberry. On February 13th, 1746, a French man named Jean-Marie was executed for the murder of his father. Hundreds of years later, on the exact same day, a man named Jean-Marie Duberry was also sentenced to death. He had also taken the life of his father. So what are the odds that two unrelated people with the same name both killed their fathers and then got executed on the same day? Like that is just way too freaky. In our ninth spot, we have the dollar bill. Now this is a pretty wholesome one for you all. When a woman named Esther was young, she had written her name on a couple of dollar bills after a bad breakup. She then told herself that she was going to marry the man that brought the bill back to her. Well, years later, she was dating a man named Paul Gratchen. The day he asked Esther to be his girlfriend, they were at a sandwich shop. As he was paying for the meal, he got handed a dollar bill with the name Esther written on it. The bill she wrote years prior. And in the end, they ended up getting married. Now, how wholesome is that? The universe literally gave her what she had manifested. Coming in at number eight, we have the girls with the red balloon. In 2001, a 10-year-old girl named Laura Buxton decided to release a red balloon from her front yard with a message on it. The balloon said, please return to Laura Buxton, and it had her address written on it. Well, this balloon traveled 140 miles and ended up landing on the yard of another 10-year-old girl's house. This girl's name was also Laura Buxton. Like, what are the odds? The two Laura Buxtons ended up meeting and they discovered that they had tons of similarities, not just their age and name. For example, they both had a guinea pig, a gray rabbit, and a three-year-old chocolate lab. They both also looked alike and dressed alike. I'm telling you, this is just way too freaky. Like, what are the odds? I'm gonna be saying that a lot in this video. What are the odds? Moving on to number seven, we have Mark Twain and Haley's Comet. Every 76 years, Halley's Comet is visible to the naked eye as it soars past Earth. Well, American writer Mark Twain was born on one of Halley's Comet's passing in 1835. The next year that the comet was said to pass was in 1910, and Mark Twain predicted that he was going to die that year. He said that he came into the world with the comet and that he was going to leave the world with the comet as well. And Mark Twain was right. Mark Twain passed one day after the comet's closest approach in 1910. So not only did Mark Twain predict his own death, but his birth and death both seamlessly lined up with Halley's Comet. How freaky. In our sixth spot, we have Violet Jessup. Violet Jessup has been named the luckiest woman as well as the unluckiest woman. She also has been given the name Miss Unsinkable, and I'll explain how she got those nicknames in just a second. So Violet was a stewardess and nurse who was on board three big sister ships when disaster struck each of them. It started with the HMS Olympic. She was on board the ship when it collided with the HMS Hawk. Then she was on the HMHS Britannic when it struck a mine at sea. And lastly, she was on board the Titanic and she managed to escape all three of these disasters. At this point, she probably was cursed. And after the first accident, she shouldn't have gotten back on any ships ever again. So that's why she's been given the name, the luckiest, unluckiest woman to live. She's been lucky to survive all the accidents, but unlucky that they kept happening to her. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Danielle Dutoit. The irony behind this next story is mind blowing. So Danielle de Toit was a South African astronomer. Over his life, he discovered and co-discovered several comets. He also spent his days giving lectures. On September 28th, 1981, he gave a lecture on how death can strike anyone at any time. As soon as the lecture was done, he popped a mint into his mouth. The mint then slid to the back of his throat. He choked on it and died right then and there. So yeah, I'd say his lecture was pretty spot on. In our fourth spot today, we have Harry Zigland. Now, this story is kind of controversial. Some say it's an old wives' tale. Others say that it actually did happen. Now, if it did happen, then this is the definition of karma. So back in the day, there was a man named Harry Zigland who broke a woman's heart. She was so heartbroken that she took her own life. Her brother was so devastated and angry at Harry that he vowed to get revenge on him. So he went out to find Harry with his gun and shot at him. Harry fell to the floor and the brother, thinking that he had succeeded in killing him, grabbed his gun and took his own life. 
But Harry survived. The bullet didn't strike him. Instead, it hit and got lodged into a nearby tree. Three years later, Henry was using dynamite to remove the tree. When he blew it up, the explosion sent the bullet out of the tree and it hit and instantly killed him. It took Karma three years, but it finally caught up to him. Coming in at number three, we have the Hoover Dam. Over the course of the construction of the Hoover Dam, there were 96 deaths. The first death was of a man named J.G. or George Turney. It occurred on December 20th, 1922. He sadly lost his life after drowning in the dam. 14 years later, on the exact anniversary of this guy's death, his son, Patrick Turney, lost his life. He fell from an electrical tower and died. This was also the final death reported during the construction of the dam meaning the first man to die and the last man were father and son, and it happened on the exact same day. Coming in at number two, we have Jack Frost and other stories. Some things are just meant to be, and you'll believe this once you hear this next story. Children's book author Anne Parrish was with her husband in Paris when they stopped by an antique bookshop from the 1920s. While in there, she found a copy of Jack Frost and other stories. She told her husband that that was her favorite book as a child. Well, when he opened the book, it had her name written inside of it. It read Anne Parrish, 209N Weber Street, Colorado Springs. So not only did it have Anne's name in the book, but it had the place she grew up in, Colorado Springs. Seems like Anne was meant to find that book. And in our number one spot today, we have the two presidents. It turns out that Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy share a lot of eerie coincidences. Besides the fact that they both were American presidents, they both were killed by a gunshot wound to the back of the head, they both passed away on a Friday, they both died before a celebration, Kennedy was assassinated on the eve of Thanksgiving, Lincoln died right before Easter, and each were accompanied by their wife and another couple when they were killed. But that's not all! They both had best friends named Billy Graham, both Billys had four children, and they both had secretaries named after the other president. Kennedy's secretary was Miss Lincoln, Lincoln's secretary was John. But wait, there's even more! Both of their successors were vice presidents called Johnson. The freakiest coincidence, Lincoln was shot in Ford's theater. Kennedy was shot in a Lincoln made by Ford. Whoa! Boom! Mic drop! Isn't that insane? I thought so. It blew my mind. Starting off this countdown, we have Thomas W. Lawson. Thomas W. Lawson was a British stockbroker who in 1907 published a book called Friday the 13th. The story was about a stockbroker who tried to make the entire stock market crash on Friday the 13th, hence the name of the book. Little did he know that he would eerily predict the future. On Friday, December 13th of 1907, a ship named Thomas W. Lawson, named after a completely different Thomas W. Lawson, not the author, set sail on her first transatlantic voyage. That day, she sank. Isn't that bizarre? A ship named Thomas W. Lawson crashed and sunk on Friday the 13th. I'm telling you, this guy predicted the future whether he meant to or not. Moving on to number nine, we have the start and end of America's Civil War. In July of 1861, Wilmer McLean's Virginia home was involved in the first battle of Bull Run. In fact, the general of the battle wrote a diary entry about a cannonball crashing through McLean's kitchen. He wrote, and I quote, a federal shell fell into the fireplace of my headquarters at the McLean house. Now, due to safety reasons, McLean moved his family home from the front lines to a new home in Appomattox County. Well, guess what? The battle ended up ending in his parlor in 1865. So it started in his backyard and ended in his parlor. So he was involved in the beginning and the end. Moving on at number eight, we have the birth chart. This story was shared by Raina Lee R on Reddit. So according to her, her brother's doctor would always get his chart mixed up at the office. And that's because there was another kid under his care with the same first and last name. To make things weirder, they were both born on the same day, just different months of the same year. And their mothers had the same name. What are the odds of that? I'll be saying that a lot in this video, so get used to it. But for someone to have the same first and last name as you, 
It's absolutely wild. And the same doctor. I just hope that they met and became best friends. Coming in at number seven, we have The Marks. This story was shared by pata 95 Nishta on Reddit. And this story is about to blow your mind. So according to her, her best friend from elementary school has three sisters. All three sisters grew up to marry engineers. Not only that, but all of their husbands were named Mark. And her best friend, I guess, followed this tradition because when she got older, she also married an engineer named Mark. What are the odds that all husbands' names were Mark and all of them are engineers? This is wild to me. Like, did the sisters do that on purpose? Are all engineers just named Mark? Also, that must be so confusing at family get-togethers and dinners. In our sixth spot, we have the meteor. So it's said that the odds of being hit by a meteor is one in 840 million. So the odds of this happening are very, very, very slim. It's next to impossible. Well, the impossible happened to a family in France. One night they were hit by a meteor, which had been flying through space for more than four and a half billion years without hitting a target. Then all of a sudden it just crashed into their home. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The odd part here is that the family's last name was Comet. So out of all families and homes to hit, it hit the family with the name Comet. That is truly bizarre. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Anthony Hopkins. In the early 1970s, Anthony Hopkins was casted to play Koista in The Girl from Petrovka. This film was based on the book of the same name. Now, to prepare for the role, he was going to read the book. However, he was unable to find any copy of the book in any bookstore. He searched all over the place, but to no avail. Then, randomly one day, as he was sitting in the London tube station, he found a copy of that book just laying around. Not only that, but when he opened the book, he found that it was signed by its author. Literally, the universe brought him what he was looking for. What are the odds of someone leaving that book behind and then Anthony finding it? The very book he was desperately looking for. Coming in at number four, we have The Close Calls. In 2014, Dutch cyclist Martin de Jong had plans to head from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. He was scheduled to be on Malaysia Airlines Flight 17. But before his flight, he bumped his ticket up to catch a later flight because it was cheaper. That is the airline that was shot down while flying over eastern Ukraine. All passengers lost their lives. That's not all. In March, he had a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. Again, he decided to bump his ticket up at the last minute to get a cheaper deal. And it's a good thing that he did. He was scheduled to be on Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, the one that disappeared, never to be seen again. So Martin escaped death twice, all because he wanted a better deal and saved some money. He's a lucky, lucky man, but also unlucky that he was supposed to be on both of those flights. In our third spot, we have the plum pudding. Mathematician Joseph Mazur shared this creepy coincidence involving French poet Emile de Champs with plum pudding in his book, Luke. So back in the day, a man named Emile was first introduced to plum pudding by a man named Mr. de Forgeboo. From that moment on, every time he had plum pudding, he would encounter Mr. de Forgeboo, and I hope I'm saying his name right. The second time he had plum pudding, he was at a restaurant and ordered it, but the waiter was like, sorry, we just sold the last pudding to this man, and points to the back of the restaurant. Lo and behold, it was Mr. DeForgeBoo. A decade later, he went to a dinner party, and at the party, they were serving plum pudding. Emile made a joke like, who's this party for, Mr. DeForgeBoo? And at that very moment, he walked through the door. But he wasn't even supposed to be at that party. He had accidentally come to the wrong door on his way to another dinner party. So what are the odds that every time that this man had plum pudding, Mr. DeForgeBoo was there? It's kind of like Beetlejuice, you know, you say his name three times and he'll appear, except in this case, you have plum pudding and he'll appear. Moving on to number two, we have Flight 666. Now this one gives me the absolute creeps. On Friday the 13th, Flight 666 departed from Copenhagen and landed in Helsinki, AKA H-E-L, hell. Let me say that again for you. Flight 666 flew to hell on Friday the 13th. I don't know about you, but if I was scheduled on that flight, I would cancel immediately. I ain't taking no chances. But thankfully, the flight landed safely in Helsinki. Thank gosh it did, because that seems like one cursed flight. It's plain creepy how it lined up exactly like that. 
pun intended, get it plain creepy. And in our number one spot today, we have the prediction of James Dean's death. On September 30th, 1955, James Dean died in a car accident. He was only 24 years old. And it seems like a man named Alec Guinness actually predicted this would happen. He warned Dean and said, and I quote, if you get in that car, you will be found dead in it by this time next week. A week later, Dean was involved in a terrible car accident and he sadly lost his life. In fact, Alec had said that the car was sinister, and I think he's right. Later, parts of the car were recovered and resold and placed into other cars. All the car owners who had parts of James Dean's car were also involved in deadly crashes. Not only that, but the mechanic working on the car died after the car rolled off the back of a truck and crushed the legs of the mechanic. So Alec was onto something here and tried to warn Dean. Starting off this countdown, we have the married couple's parents. This story surrounds a couple named Stephen and Helen Lee. A couple of years ago, the pair got engaged when they learned something very freaky about their families. While going through family photos during their engagement party, they found photos of their parents together. Turns out that Stephen's father and Helen's mom had actually dated and were set to get married in Korea in the 1960s. But their parents' parents disapproved, so they they didn't. Had they not disapproved, the couple would have never been born. Not only that, but what are the odds that they got together after their parents had already gotten together? Kind of awkward if you ask me. Moving on to number nine, we have the church fire. On March 1st of 1950 at 7.25 p.m., a church exploded in Beatrice, Nebraska. At 7.20, a choir practice had begun, except none of the 15 choir members were there. And it's lucky that they weren't or else they would have perished in the fire. Turns out that all 15 members arrived late due to personal reasons. So they were nowhere near the church when it exploded. What are the odds that all 15 members were running late? This story could have ended in tragedy. Thankfully, it didn't. Moving on to number eight, we have the wedding vows. In 2007, Fred and Lynette Dubendorf were walking along a beach clearing up some litter when they found a message in a bottle. After they opened it, they found it contained the marriage vows of another couple. Upon closer inspection, they found that their marriage dates matched. The couple who created the vows in the bottle were married on August 18th of that year. The Dubendorfs were married August 18th of 1979. Both couples were also married on beaches. The Dubendorf were in complete shock and actually reached out to the other couple. Thankfully, the couple left their address in the bottle. Both couples now believe that their marriages were meant to be, especially Matt and Melody, the couple that wrote the vows in a bottle, who had several failed marriages before finding each other. They were skeptical about getting married again, but this to them is a sign that it was meant to be. Moving on to number seven, we have Edgar Allan Poe. This is one of the freakiest coincidences I have ever read about. So in 1838, Edgar Allan Poe wrote his only complete novel. It was called The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. The book the book was about Arthur Pym who goes on a nautical adventure. He hops on a boat as a stowaway and hides out there. But while aboard the ship, a mutiny occurs and a number of crew members lose their life. There's only four members aboard the ship now. One of the men was named Richard Parker. They kept him alive to help them control the ship. However, they encountered a terrible, terrible storm and things went south. The remaining four people on board are struggling to find food. So Richard was like, let's draw straws. Whoever gets the shortest straw will be killed and the others can eat them. So they did as Richard said, and he ended up drawing the shortest straw and then was eaten by his crew members. Believe it or not, but 46 years after that book was published, this happened in real life. In May of 1884, four men were traveling from England to Australia when they found themselves fighting for their lives. The men decided to draw straws and see who they should eat. The cabin boy drew the smallest straw. What was the cabin's boy's name? Richard Parker the same name as the guy who got eaten in the book. What are the odds of that? Is Edgar Allan Poe a psychic or did he write history or both? Moving on to number six, we have Redbox. This story comes from Madney25 on Reddit. A couple of years ago, her and her friend went to Redbox to see if they could rent the movie Tron. For those of you who don't know what Redbox is, basically it's an American video rental company that has these little kiosks you can go to and pick what movie you want and then you can rent it and you'll get the DVD. 
So they went there, but they found out that they didn't have Tron. So they were like, okay, screw it, let's just rent another movie. Well, when they opened up the DVD case, turns out that inside was the movie Tron. Someone had put it back in the wrong case. But what are the odds? Because that's the movie that they wanted to see in the first place. Like out of all the DVDs they could have gotten, they got the one with the switched disc. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the lucky numbers. So this story comes from Yamletf on Reddit. According to them, they were working as a call center operator when they asked the caller for her birthday. The caller said it was April 20th, which was the same birthday as the operator. When the next caller rang in, their birthday was April 27th, which was the same birthday as the operator's brothers. So at this point, the operator was like, okay, what is going on? And then the caller told her that maybe it's a sign and that she should go play the lottery with those dates. And that night she went to the grocery store, played with those numbers and ended up winning. Winning. It was only $380, but still that's better than nothing. What are the odds that the winning numbers correlated to the caller's birthdays? In our fourth spot, we have the birthdays. According to a woman named Carrie Lee Simmons, her and her best friend share a number of eerie similarities. First, they both have the same birthdays. Not only that, but turns out that they were born in the same hospital and their mothers shared the same recovery room. Keep in mind that their mothers were complete strangers. Then 17 years later, the two connected and became best friends. When they found out that they were practically born beside each other, they completely freaked out. That's how you know that friendship is meant to be. In our third spot, we have the sign. This next story is from Reddit user Eric FP23. So the day in which her grandfather died, her mother had been sitting in bed next to him, comforting him. Before he passed, she whispered to him, tell Richie I say hi. Richie was her ex-husband who had passed away a couple years earlier. A couple of days after her grandfather's passing, Erica and her mom were at Walgreens when all of a sudden a huge truck drove by with some writing written on the side of it. It read, Richie says hi. I am speechless. Like, that's just goosebumps. And Erica and her mom were speechless too. It's either just a super eerie coincidence or Richie sent that message from the grave. Moving on to number two, we have the taxi driver. I'm sorry, but this one is a little depressing compared to the other stories on today's list. In 1974, a man was riding his moped scooter in Bermuda when he was struck and killed by a taxi. One year later, his twin brother was riding the exact same scooter when he was struck and killed killed by a taxi as well. The taxi was driven by the exact same driver who took his brother's life. So not only did the twins die the exact same way, but they had been killed by the exact same person. And in our number one spot today, we have the life savior. When Su Wei Fong of China was 50 years old, he was outside near a river by his home when he saw a boy drowning. So he jumped in and saved his life. 30 years later, he rescued another boy from the river. This boy had slipped and fell into the river and didn't know how to swim. Once again, Wei Fong jumped in and saved this boy's life. Well, it turns out that the two people he saved were related. They were father and son. 30 years ago, he saved the boy's father from drowning. Then he saved the father's son from drowning in the same river. So they believe that this man is their guardian angel. 